and we're back. Today, the second day of uh, this week, uh, I'm streaming. Um, how, how have you been today? Uh, I've been working like every weekday uh, and of course watching uh, Death Around the Sun which started today at 12 UTC if I'm not mistaken. So there have been a couple of nice sessions here on Twitch uh, which were interesting. I had them in the background so it was uh, fun to listen to while, while working while well I had to well coincidentally I had to do some arm templates uh, stuff with it uh, cleaning them up uh, which I will be doing today this session also so I want to well add some some stuff some resources we added yesterday to the arm templates we have already and deploy them sorry for that so that's uh, our goal for today uh, but in the meantime let me tell me how, how have you been today put it in chat and let me know uh, I'm eager to know how your day have been and if it was just as awesome as mine or not also I will be playing some background music today because I found it quite well silent uh, on the stream uh, yesterday so I, I've watched my recording uh, which is been placed in my YouTube channel by now and I thought well when I'm reading and thinking it would be nice to have some sound on the background so I'll be playing some music today uh, by uh, Harris Heller a uh, popular well, streamer uh, doing gaming stuff also has a nice YouTube channel with tips for streamers so uh, check it out uh, I'm using a stream beats uh, playlist uh, which are nice background music so let's get uh, let's get to it um, so if, if you didn't watch yesterday and don't want to well spend time uh, uh, re-watching it or at least not at the moment uh, what I did yesterday is uh, well creating a virtual network in Azure um, so this was rather easy and afterwards I was figuring out how to put one of my app services inside the VNet and have my other app service connect to this well this uh, app service uh, through the VNet in hindsight this was rather easy uh, to do it was just well I, I had to search for the, the right search terms and navigate to the proper pages uh, but you can watch it back in the recording and I'll be sure to do a write-up on my blog later on so uh, check it out uh, follow me on Twitter I'll post a notification on Twitter when the blog is out and also subscribe to my YouTube channel because you will get notified when the recording is being placed and of course follow me on Twitch just follow me everywhere and we're fine okay um so let me show you what we did today yesterday uh, just a small recap so I, I remember myself also um so we were on this page the the what is an azure virtual network and through this we got on some other pages like the private link page which is awesome uh, having private links because it's your private endpoint um, to a VNet, to a service in the VNet which you can connect to. Downside is, is for app services it's in preview so it's in preview in the US regions and my app services are deployed in Europe and I don't feel like redeploying them to uh, well the other part of the world maybe in some future session just not now so i might be use using this private link feature for the key vault because the key vault private link is ga and well i still need a key vault service so why not put it inside my vnet and uh, have a private link and point to it but that's something for the future so we're not using private link 
And what I discovered, we need to use access restrictions, uh, the, the app serves access restrictions in order to, well, do some VNet routing. So um, I came across this via an Azure function page, a tutorial. So putting your Azure functions uh, as a private site, uh, which states you, somewhere you need to do some access restrictions. So function apps is just a subset or is built on top of app services. So if it works for functions, it's probably working for app services also. And it did. So what, what I did is add a new access restriction, only allow traffic routed through my new VNet to my app service and having app service integration for one of my other app services in the VNet. So I'll show you in a minute. Well, I'll show you right now. So let, where's Chrome? There it is. So I have uh, the portal started up over here. And as you can see, I have this virtual network. Uh, let's magnify. So I have this virtual network, which we created yesterday, which I created yesterday, manually, so by hand in the portal, in order to see what happens and how does this stuff work. I've placed this one, this app service, behind the VNet, so with the access restrictions I spoke of. So we have the networking tab over here, the networking blade, access restrictions, and as you can see, I'm only allowing traffic from my backend VNet on this app service. It's enabled and all other traffic is, well, being denied. What do we have more? Well, there's uh, oh, my backend for frontend service. So it has the, the VNet integration. So the networking VNet integration and it has the integration with the well backend VNet. As we can see, is there a name? So this is the VNet name. So that's the, the one minute re or maybe two minute recap of what we did yesterday. And I did some pre-work while while doing this stuff. Uh, is um, well copy exporting the template and see what is being created in my resources. So what I saw is a VNet. Well, the VNet JSON looks a bit like this. So this is a new virtual network with some parameters, address space. Well, the, the the stuff we filled out yesterday. Uh, so this is the the well the, the JSON for it. And in order to place my conferences app service behind this VNet, I had to apply well the, the access restrictions, IP security restrictions. Uh, which looks a bit like this, apparently. So the, the important part is uh, this piece. So I need to have the resource of well, the, the, the VNet and a name. I wonder if this name needs to be the same or if it's just visual. Uh, we'll look it up in the documentation in a minute. I think this is the name of the rule because this one is called deny all. That's probably a pretty name. Oh, and the, the Kudu site allows anything because I still want to connect to this Kudu site in case of an emergency. So we don't, well, in a production scenario, you probably want to have some restrictions on it also. Maybe only from your office address. I just want to connect to it from everywhere because I'm a lazy dev and this is just a proof of concept. And the VNet integration looks a bit like this, or it looks like this when exporting the template from the portal. So nothing very fancy. So we have this, this is the name, the resource ID of the VNet. And that's the thing we need to reference. 
easy peasy, right? So this is a new resource. Uh, where was this? Yes, this is a new resource block. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the subnet name. Okay, well, for the integration, the Phoenix integration, I have to look up, uh, do an export again, and see see how this exactly looks like. But that's something I will be doing later on. So, ARM templates. Um, in order to save time, I will be deploying them from my local machine. So I have the terminal over here. I'll, I'll zoom it in a bit. PLS. Uh, so I will be deploying it from the terminal. Otherwise, I have to wait for the build server to do a build. And what's worse than writing ARM templates? Watching someone else write them. Yes, I totally agree, Case. ARM templates are a pain, and especially watching other people struggle through this pain. At least it's not YAML. Right? So, uh, I'll, I'll just start with it in case you already, you probably already know all of this stuff. So, it's probably easy peasy for you. I'll just turn on some music. And just do some copy pasting because that's what I'm good at. Your ARM outputs extension. Yeah, I'm not using it because I don't have, well, do I have, I don't have outputs in this ARM template. So. There's no reason for me to use it at the moment. <laughs> A boon. I am using it at the, the day project though, because at first we had created some our own PowerShell script to do the output in, and placing them in variables. But then we discovered we also had some nested outputs and it quickly became a mess. So I said, well, I know this guy, Case, and he has this awesome extension. Let's just install it. And our pain was solved with your extension. Let me check out for the other viewers. Okay. So, uh, I always mess up your name, your last name. So it's this, this extension. It's awesome. It does, well, what it says it does, your arm, arm outputs, and it puts them to proper, well, variables you can use in PowerShell. Also nested, so there's a sample in below. So if this is your output, I hope it isn't, but if you have an output which looks like this, Cases extension will make sure you can use it. Awesome stuff, definitely use it in your production uh, stuff. It's also on GitHub, if I'm not mistaken, or even on GitHub. So you know Case isn't stealing your passwords. So that's... Wow, 18k organizations. I have started, if I'm not mistaken, just in Firefox. Because that's where I'm logged in on my GitHub. I'll do it right away. No, oh sorry, I hadn't started yet. 150k runs. Oh, that's impressive. That's impressive. You should monetize this stuff. So you should because you're a, free, a freelancer now, right? Or a, or a startup. 
to do a startup. So you need all the cash we can think of. What are you doing now? Because I know you're doing startup stuff, but there's a lot of stuff you can do. I saw you needed a logo from 99designs, which is great. Yeah, you have another extension. I, I thought it was the cost management. Right? I've, I've looked at it, cost insights. This, this one by you? Yes, this one. This is also a great uh, well, extension. I've looked at it um, and it is great and fun, but most of the time I'm not in a role where I have to, well, care just that much for the cost. But if you have project managers or people who do care for the, for the cost of their services, this is a great thing to use, definitely. You're in computer vision now, all code, writing on temps. Write up your game. Oh, interesting. I love to talk about this someday in person at a meetup or something, because doing this in chat and on video is, well, strange. So hopefully we'll be allowed at meetups someday soon. So back to code. <laughs> so I had copy pasted stuff over here. Um, let's just do some more copy pasting. So um, back and virtual network instance name. Well. Have a great, uh, have a great evening, and if you have time, don't forget to uh, watch uh, Death Round the Sun because it also has great speakers and sessions, or at least from what I saw today. Thanks for the presentation. Depends on nothing, really. Tabs, not using them. Use an array over here. Makes sense. Is cool. So go to the top over here. Was it called my finite? 
of a backend network. Prefix. <coughs> so I also had this this on my dev my my working machine. I have this white space visualizer. No, no, this is, I saw this at someone who was doing who was doing YAML stuff. No. It would be nice if you could run YAML. It would be nice if you could run your extensions. I know this is a thing or has been a thing in the past. Prettier. Is this it? No. No, this isn't it. White space. <clears throat> this looks a bit. Well, not really. Protocol error. I'll, I'll log into my other machine and see which extensions I have installed there because I really like this extension to do. Where is it? So there it is. Extensions installed. Indent Rainbow. This is great stuff. So you see, uh, well, I'll show you in my own code. You can also exclude languages like plain text, which makes sense. Uh, but this is this is great stuff because now you will be able to see, well, highlighting like this. Is this visible? This is cool, right? So now you can see the indentations which are made. And also if I'm making a space over here, it makes it red. So clearly visible, I did something wrong. Cool stuff. So backend version network name, blah, blah, blah. And I also needed the address prefixes, which is an array. should be an array and I've chosen this as a prefix the reason for this is well I mentioned it yesterday because I like to have everything default and this appears to be a default for for creating networks I think this was in the documentation as the default and I'm not knowledgeable enough to well do something else for this. I know how to change the numbers, but I don't know what the impact will be. So the slash 16 uh, tells tells my network that so these are hard, I can change them, and these zeros, so the, the two ending digits, I can change uh, to whatever I want, create subnets with them, whatever. So. that and we need to yes address prefixes and now we have the subnet so the subnet is an resource is an entity which belongs to the vnet it's 
close down the remote desktop session there close down um, so the subnet let's make it a new entity because I have I can have dozens of subnets in my VNet and each well subnet can do or has its own little purpose so what I what I read in documentation it is advised to have a couple of large VNets for management purposes instead of a lot of small VNets and I think what we're supposed to do is well having while having a large VNet making smaller subnets which each, each have their own single purpose so I've now created a subnet for my own services so my own app services so my own computing stuff and I think I will be creating a new subnet later on where I will be placing the Azure services in like Key Vault, uh, like storage accounts, like all of the other stuff and if I'm not mistaken we can I can do some VNet peering between the two in order to make well to, to make them available to each other but that's something I'll be doing later on so subnet I think I can copy paste this completely so have an array oh just have all of this stuff do some like this <coughs> and concatenate clear and I think we can now do this sorry yeah enable DDoS protection so is this a boolean DDoS protection enabled and this oh <laughs> let's go to the documentation so we're doing some networking latest virtual network DDoS is a boolean it's not required it's not required so uh, I will be skipping it what stuff is required API version and blah 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 so the address space isn't required Strange because it's kind of important for a VNet. DHCP subnets also. Oh, hmm. there's not a lot of required stuff. So, if you saw one of my earlier sessions, you know this documentation isn't always the truth. Well, most of the time it is, but sometimes there's a property you have to specify which isn't required oh well um, I don't know which service this was anymore so this is a uh, this is good Did, oh, 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 oh. oh I had changed the wrong one enable DDoS protection yeah.
a cleanup task. Create linked templates. So I have this massive ARM template now, which works. But it might be a nice idea to make these linked templates so they can so they can be deployed in parallel. Also, um, we use copy function for app services because I am deploying three app services now and copy pasting all of the JSON all the time, so that's kind of duplication. Uh, so I can use the copy function for this. But that's just to make it prettier. It doesn't have any, well, real value, just to make your ARM template more maintainable, more readable in the end. So this, uh, this should add a new VNet. Um, let's let's just see if this still works. So I have some I have a deployment snippet somewhere. Yes, over here it is. It also holds the, the proper uh, files. So the live code sure API resource group. This file. This file. Doesn't contain any values, so I guess this won't work, uh, or at least doesn't do what I wanted to, to do. Well, these aren't really secrets; you can look them up in uh, in just about everywhere uh, on my session. So. Um, Authority, this should be this one. Application ID, Yuri, is this. Oh, I got another one. Speaker API URL. Um, conferences URL. And I have another one, the client ID, uh, which is probably the, is this one used? Is this used? Yes. Hmm. Okay. App ID, Yuri. So I have my secrets file over there. Oh, it's probably, um, which, which service is this? This is the speaker since its name, so I don't have. Um, manage user secrets. Oh, just put them also in this. Yes. Authority. Okay, so this makes a bit more sense because while I was filling out these values, I thought, oh, this doesn't look right. Client ID. App ID, yes. Application ID, Yuri. This is what I need. Mm -hmm. Is there something else? No. Let's see what happens. So it doesn't crash. My template is valid. <laughs> and I will also be able to, well, delete it. Delete the VNet afterwards. I could have done this beforehand.
the group deployment is deprecated and will be removed. Use deployment group. Okay. Subnet missing required delegation. link. Ah. Yes. If you remember, so I have this subnet and I have added this service endpoint. And I think I did this I think I did this to try out stuff. So uh, it's also subnet delegation. Delegate subnet to a service to be used by a dedicated service. <coughs> I think I should be able to delete this. Probably not, no, because it's being used. Resources, so I first have to remove um, this one and this one. So this is the conferences, networking, so I'll just remove everything. this one and can I remove it? Yes, yes. So allow all. Okay, so this one is gone. And over here the networking. I'll be removing the Fnet integration. Disconnect. Yes. gone so I should be able to delete the subnet now so let me just delete the complete virtual network it doesn't crash right away deleted the virtual network okay cool um so this, oh, this one is of my function app. App service plan. So what was this one? What's hosted inside this apps? Yes, so this one can be removed also. Just to make it a bit more clean. Storage account also for the, I think it's used by the function app yes so the house and the secrets so i can delete all of this stuff yes i want to delete this stuff Just let this run run and see if it is going correct now. It's running. <coughs> so 
and I have a good feeling about this. I have a good feeling this should work because I don't have any squigglies anymore. I'm creating something standalone at the moment and only integrating it later. So, success! Success! So, let's refresh this one. I should have a VMAT and a subnet now. So the backend network, subnets, and the appropriate subnet. So this is good. Now I can get started with the integration of the stuff. <coughs> Let's see if I can add them by hand. Um, blah blah blah. Description IP4 VNet. Yes, this looks. Oh no, I do need the service endpoint for web. So, I had enabled it yesterday, and apparently it's mandatory if you want to have extra restrictions for your VNet. So I need to have this service endpoint for web. Okay. There's probably something in the documentation on this, how to do this. Submits. What does it delegate dele delegations? The resource ID. Okay. So this should be the, the Microsoft.web. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so I need a delegation object. Uh, where was it? It's here needs an array. It's on the main level, apparently. Yes. Subnets. Oh, it's on the. It's on the subnets. Right. So subnets. Address prefix, address pre NFG, security rules. Okay, so I need to do NFG, properties, security rules. That sounds. Oh, no, no, it's route table. White space is killing me. Yes, it's on the same. What's my mouse pointer? It's on the same level as the rest. So it's in it is in the subnet in the name properties. It's in the properties address prefix. So I need to add it over here. <coughs> Delegations. Okay, ID. What should be the ID? Around. object resource ID okay I don't know what to fill out over here let's add this by hand to see what happens. So 
serves it on its cat web. Pants. Okay, in this subnet, export template. See how this looks like. The subnet. Delegations. So we don't have any delegations. Next was related resources. Oh, okay. Didn't know this. Virtual networks, subnets. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's defining it. It's defining it twice. So the service endpoints. Hmm. It's a service endpoint. Not a delegation, okay. What does the resource ID? Yes, that's the Microsoft Web. Location, not mandatory. Tags, properties. Service endpoint policy definitions. Locations stop. Well, so this tells me I can use the Microsoft Web. I'll just delete it now again. So network be gone. Yes. That's one of the best features of the cloud. You can just create and remove services. Or at least that's what I think. Probably cached this thing. So this is mm -hmm. seven endpoints web save. Refreshing card. Hmm. Okay, so it's probably gone. Resource not found. And this is just in the cache. Terminal. See what happens if I did it correctly. still running so that's a good thing and it's done so I should have a backend network now with a subnet and a service endpoint Microsoft web so this is what I've deployed just now <coughs> let's just commit this Good, and now I need to do the integration. So I'll start with the access restriction. Copy paste some stuff from the export template yesterday. So in the properties of my in, in the 
the properties of my conferences API app service I need to add some IP security restrictions and a CM security restrictions so this goes in the properties of my conf site configuration so where is it conferences conferences site conferences instance name resource now what do we need this was the last oh, like this oh wow. well this I need the resource ID of my Phoenix so I earned off a subnet apparently Peanuts out, oh, this peanuts subnet resource ID. So, should be able to give me something like resource ID, variables, um, backend network dot subnet dot. Probably should have created a name. Mm -hmm. Yes, I need to change this, do some refactoring, so I still need this subnet. That was it called, app subnet. App subnet. Configuration is this, and the name well, a bit too much, like this. Uh, I hope I can point to it. Variables, subnet, and subnet, instance name. I could get a recurring issue now, but I'm not sure. So that. Okay, over here also. Mm -hmm. Instance name. So I'm making multiple objects over here because, like I mentioned, I probably want to create a new subnet later on for my Azure services. Resource ID. Uh, I need some other parameter. Like it should be a resource type, which is a um, it's virtual networks. Subnet. Resource IP. Uh, there was something in the documentation. <laughs> Subnets. 
Microsoft Network, Fusion Network, Subnets. And there it is. This is the type. Subnets. And the name. So that's probably good enough. Backend VNet. Mm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Allow backend and backend services. Backend services. So denial allow. This looks good to me at least. And what's this? So what's this? There's some it's quickly over here. There's some red, but I don't see squigglies. Oh, here it is. Return. Does it have an end? Circular dependency. That's what I expected. Um, well, then I'll have to copy paste. This. I could also put it in a different uh, variable, but that, well, this is close enough. So putting it in a different order or different format, object or object format. I could do this, but mm, doesn't feel like a massive improvement. <coughs> So, but uh, no red anymore. So this should work. And just to make sure, Chrome, um, I don't have any. Let's go to the this integration. This is the Finet. Let's go to the conferences. Networking. So nothing here. Hopefully, in a couple of minutes, there will be an access restriction. Because that means my stuff is working. two resource name arguments. Apparently I messed up this part. I also remember I messed up adding a depends on. So where is the conferences instance name? So 
uh, how to do a well this is uh, I'm using the resource ID somewhere else right so it needs two variables which is something I have and app subnet instance name is also filled out so this this looks okay ish so the resource ID function should work it's probably this identifier resource ID function with the subnet Mm -hmm. Oh, my net slash subnets. Okay. So I need to do some concatenation magic. This is variables dot dot instance name. Hmm. So what I have now is a very long line. So the resource diffusion network, my network name, slash subnets, which is what this Michael B is mentioning. Okay. Have I saved the file? No. It's not defined in the template. First network slash subnets. Uh, well, kind of is. It slash subnets, but uh, there's a missing slash. Oh. I'm missing a slash. Hmm. Probably need to remove this one also. Save. Just to be sure. It's doing better now. Jason. Yes. This is the configuration. 
So that's not very smart of me. So is this used somewhere else? Only over here and here. Okay, so this shit's solid. I forgot that I need to change it over there also. Another template violation requires three resource name arguments. Okay. The type requires three. Let me Google this. So how does this work? Maybe there's a subnet. Okay, so there's... Mm -hmm. Oh, this is which function? Or it a resource, still the resource ID. Okay. Let me make it a bit bigger. Subnet one name. Resource ID, first network resource group. Okay, so this is what is necessary. Hmm. It's better as well compared to what this this looks like. So I'm gonna make this no not very readable at all. I'll just do it like this. I <laughs> don't need this one. Still the subnets. I need the name of my virtual network as the first parameter. And because I'm using a sub resource, I can specify it as a second parameter. So I I didn't know this one existed, but it makes kind of, it's, well, it's useful. Also makes a bit of sense. So resource ID, it's a subnet, so my first guess was right. And this is the network, and this is the subnet. So now I can also add the depends on. And do another deployment. Hmm. It's not defined in the template. Well, it, it 
kind of is. Or is it? Backend network subnets. Yamp face secure API subnets. So that's this part. That I understand. Well, I, yeah, I understand why it thinks it's not available. So let's refactor this a bit. So this is the configuration. So let's make the configuration. I'll just um, so configuration. This can be done or uh, removed. I'll create the app subnet, which will look like this. This makes it a bit more, oh, a bit prettier. Oh, oh, never mind. I mean this one. Not this one. So the properties. And now I'm able to use the instance name again. Whoa, uh, be gone. Dot subnets dot instant name and I'll rename this to properties and remove all of this stuff. Remove these two and fix the white spacing. So now I have this app subnet. And this is much prettier, in my opinion. Yes, much. Do another deployment. Imagine if I had to do this via the build server every time. Invalid template. It's not defined. Okay. So maybe it's the depends on. So this one is probably the, the one causing the issues. I've, heard, I've seen this before, the, the depends on having issues with some resources which are defined in templates. And I guess as the subnet is, well, not an actual resource, but still, hmm. hopefully this will work when doing a clean deployment. Otherwise, I have to figure out how to do the depends on on a subnet. Hmm. I see it. There isn't a resource slash subnets over here. So if I had specified this as a, well, uh, its own resource, it would probably have worked. Now it's just a property of this version network. So the resource ID function probably doesn't understand this. Which, oh, it's only supported 2018. Oh, okay, so this is a nice error. SCM security restrictions. <coughs> so I need to update, well, 2015, yeah, that's kind of old. Let's just go to 2018. 
also fixes one of the squigglies. I'll just do this for all of my web projects. Web twenty eighteen all of them are new now. Solved a couple of squigglies. So what are the other squigglies? Yeah, so this one is available. So I didn't make this one up. Failure so must conform to exactly one of the associated schemes. Twenty eighteen. I can probably change this one safely also. Let's solve a couple of other squigglies. And this has been deployed. So, what were we doing? Oh, the access restrictions. Access restrictions. So, I should have one now. Yes, with my backend. So, that's good. That's good. So, Mm -hmm. So this should be forbidden, yes. Slash weather forecast now. That is a big count of parameters. Also unavailable. Cool. Was this actually yes, big conferences, so forbidden. That's what I wanted because all traffic should go through the VNet now. That's what I was going for. And we have this one. Overview, so I need to add the integration over here. Uh, test backend conferences. So, a web app unavailable. Strange. Oh. Forbidden, so that's good. And uh, this one is, I don't know what. It blocked your access, so forbidden. IP forbidden, that's, that's good. So I need to do the VNet integration part. The VNet integration part. Let me first commit this stuff. Stage. Um, <clears throat> it's almost 10 o'clock and I want to stop at about 10, 10 o'clock. So hopefully this will go quite fast. Push network connections. Mm, okay, yeah, this was the variable. So this is the resource ID to the virtual network. Uh, I want to have integrate with, and this is the resource I need to add. Websites, the secure API, backend front end instance. So this is it. Back and front. So this is the staging slot. Mm. I'll add it over here. So it's nicely located near the rest. Near the rest of the resources I defined. 2018 something something. Uh, this is what is this?
virtual network connection. So this looks like the app subnet. So what's this? This is a good. <clears throat> Let's go to the documentation again. The web. Uh, where is it? Web. What scheme am I using over here? 2018.11.1. Sites. Virtual network connections. So the name name of an existing virtual network okay so there's the uh, and there's also the resource naming or i thought there is a resource name function Or not. So why does the name of an existing virtual network? Oh, I have this name in my template. So this should be C. Your API name. Uh, I'll just try it. Uh, but it's this name. So this is the name of my virtual network. This for first group uh, location. Uh, it's dependent on my, my site, obviously. Um, APIs. Dot, this is the conferences site. And it's also dependent on uh, the virtual the network, obviously. So, where was this one? It depends on this one. Uh, I was busy over here. Yeah. I could just use a resource ID over here. And also, where is the paste it? A resource ID. This is a bit better, along with this one. Finet resource ID. That's this one. I think it's strange to have the name to be the name of my VNet and specify the resource ID over here. That's strange in my opinion. But I'll see if it works. Because this was all I copy pasted from yesterday's session. Uh, external ID. Yes, so this is the resource ID. And this is my site name slash I don't understand this name I don't understand this name so let me try to name of an existing virtual network so name Uh, 
Where is it? Mm -hmm. Looks like the music stopped. Why? Play. Oh. I was at the end of the playlist, apparently. Hmm. Well, I can always uh, save the file and see what happens. Messed up at least one. Secure API back in network at line 159. Let's see if it's true. 159. And there's something. There's something wrong over here. Should I remove this one? Is this better? Must be stream later rules. Mm. No, instant name, so that's, uh, yeah. That's a resource. So it was kind of right, kind of the right line. Oh, why is this red now? Ah, that's why the name was in front of this. So I've had this concat, uh, the name, I have to prefix the name. Or postfix. So that's why it had the name over there. So this is the type. And I have to specify the name with the slash. So that's why this 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 was specified like so. <coughs> Learning something new every day. Um oh God. Comma, comma, variables, APIs dot conference dot instance name, slash instance name, and I have to add this one better. The validation is awesome nowadays for these ARM templates. So I installed the ARM template extension in VS Code. This just works like a charm. Still running, so that's a good sign. Picture of water is empty, so has a bit of dry mouth. Swamp.
Swift network cannot be modified. Yeah. I don't know what Swift is, so I can just remove it. I am eager to know what it is. Swift network. Swift network and so I'll do some reading on this while stuff is being deployed. Microsoft and Swift, so it's an it's a thing. Now this is payment Swift, so that's probably not it. Deployment is Correct. Well, I'll look this up later on. Well, let's go to Chrome and see if I'm actually integrated. So this is secure API networking. Click here to configure. Refresh. So I don't see much happening. Could be caching of course, but IP is also still forbidden. So not a lot has happened. Or at least, well this could take some time, or at least I think it could take some time. Saved it right. But it is saved. Oh, it's the wrong one. I've, I've integrated the wrong one. So I want to do the secure API, but I've integrated this one. Yes, so the integration works, it's just the uh, wrong. Observe. So disconnecting and going to code and do the proper one. So uh, backend content. So that's this one. I want to integrate this one. Backend go frontend. Okay. So this should be good. Doing another deployment, and if this one succeeds also, and I have this integration in place, I think we're done for the night. looks okay. So this one is still not. And this is the backend frontend and it has its integration. And this should, well, it's still forbidden. Still forbidden. So that's strange. Freenet name, Western Europe. So I have been added to it. <coughs> IP addresses. Okay. So this worked in a jiffy yesterday. Well, I 
animation could be take some time. Oh, yesterday I had to do this in Firefox. And it also gets forbidden. Just prettier. And this one is also refresh. Access restrictions, so this one is applied. Overview, maybe restart it just to be sure. Successfully restarted. So starting up, this one also, hopefully this is forced to use the new VNet and load the new DNS settings, uh, well, whatever it does on the water, underneath, are the settings okay, I think so. Networking. It's at least what I expect. Oh, gateway status. I haven't specified the gateway, so I don't know what this means. Still forbidden. This one also. Yes, disconnect and do it manually. Oh, communicating might take a couple of hours to take effect. This does look differently. I'll just disconnect it, run the deployment again. And apparently this can take up to a couple of hours. Yesterday it worked immediately, but let's give the stuff the benefit of the doubt. And I'll come back to this sometime later to check if well, stuff still works. I'll also commit this. What have I done? Um, edit. Oh, yeah. Edit. Peanut. Mission to sometimes a PI. <laughs> well, while while this deployment is running, I'll just push the changes to. Uh, I'll wait till the. Deployment until uh, the deployment is done, and then I'll push my changes, which will trigger another build and deployment. But you can see all of the code changes on my GitHub page, so check it out. And if you have any comments, suggestions, file an issue, or reach out to me on well, any platform, whatever uh, you're on. Um, I'll see. Well, the deployment is done. So I'll quickly refresh the page to see, yeah, it's, it looks a bit different, but that's probably because I didn't specify optional parameters and stuff like this. Still, this should work, so 
always as Schlepan is and uh, see what happens tomorrow. Uh, next time, uh, next time I'll be airing is uh, well next week on Monday, and next week on Tuesday is a special session because I am invited at uh, SDNcast to talk a bit about uh, well uh, men's identities. So if you don't follow SDNcast yet, they're also here on Twitch. Uh, feel f feel free to follow them. I also host. Uh, their session on my own uh, channel and uh, well see you next week and uh, stay safe stay healthy thank you all for watching <laughs>